From Palm Sunday until Jesus' bodily resurrection on Easter Sunday, this is Holy Week, and it defines who we are as Christians. Let's reflect on the days. On Sunday of Holy Week, Jesus rode triumphantly into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey, which was a symbol of peace. He rode humbly and slowly to shouts of Hosanna as the people waved palm branches and laid their cloaks on the ground. That night, Jesus and his disciples stayed in Bethany with Lazarus and his two sisters, Mary and Martha. Bethany was about three miles from Jerusalem. Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead and all, fr all four of them were good friends. Hello, I'm Kathy Bartow. On Monday of Holy Week, Jesus and his disciples arrived at the temple. When Jesus saw that it was full of corrupt money changers, he got very angry and began overturning their tables and clearing out the temple. The Pharisees did not like this. Matthew 21, verses 12 and 13. Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all who are buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. On Tuesday of Holy Week, the temple's religious leaders were very upset with Jesus. He was establishing himself as a spiritual authority and showing the people who these religious leaders really were. Because of this, the Pharisees and other religious leaders wanted to get Jesus arrested. Jesus knew this and was able to evade their traps and told them they were not, that they were nothing more than a brood of vipers. Listen to Matthew 23, verses 27 and 28. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You are like whitewashed tombs, which are beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of the bones of the dead and everything unclean. In the same way, on the outside, you appear to people as righteous, but on the inside, you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. This day was also the day when Judas Iscariot negotiated with the rabbinical court of Israel, also known as the Sanhedrin and the day when Jesus took his disciples to the Mount of Olives and gave them the Olivet Discourse. This discourse can be found in John chapter 12, verses 20 to 38. This is a discourse wherein Jesus describes the chronology of the end times. On Wednesday of Holy Week, scholars of the Bible speculate that after an exhausting two days in Jerusalem, Jesus and his disciples spent Wednesday resting. On Thursday of Holy Week, also known as Maundy Thursday, this is the day Jesus shared the Passover meal with his disciples and called out Judas Iscariot as his betrayer. We know this meal as the Last Supper. Jesus called out Judas as his betrayer and shared communion with the remaining disciples. Listen to Matthew 26, verses 25 through 29. Judas was the one who was going to hand him over. He said, surely you don't mean me, teacher, do you? Jesus answered, you have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it. He handed it to his disciples and said, take this and eat. Eat it. This is my body. Then he took a cup. He gave thanks and handed it to them. He said, all of you drink from it. This is my blood of the covenant. It is poured out to forgive the sins of many people. Here's what I tell you, from now on, I won't drink wine with you again until the day I drink it with you in my Father's kingdom. And after dinner, Jesus and his disciples went into the Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus sweats blood while praying to his heavenly Father about what would take place the next day. Jesus knew what lay ahead of him. He knew about the torture. He knew about the nailing of his hands and feet to the cross, and he knew about the separation from his father. Jesus became the sin of the world, a sinless man who was 100% God and 100% man. All the sins on the world were put upon his body. 
as well as the wrath of his father for these sins. Jesus would carry these sins to the cross and would bury them with him. Later, there arose a commotion as the temple guards came with Judas to arrest Jesus. Judas kissed Jesus, signaling to the guards whom to arrest. On Friday of Holy Week, this day is known as Good Friday. After several very unlawful trials, Jesus was sentenced to death by crucifixion. Jesus' punishment was unbelievable torture. We don't know what type of torture Jesus actually received, but it was from the Roman soldiers, not from the temple guards. Jesus was then made to carry a 100-pound cross up the hill to Calvary. When he arrived at Calvary, there were two criminals who would flank Jesus on either side. The soldiers nailed Jesus' hands and feet to the cross and hoisted it into place. What horrendous pain and agony our Savior must have felt. And the worst was yet to come. Three hours passed with Jesus hanging on that cross. At 12 o'clock noon, all the earth was enveloped in total darkness. For three hours, Jesus became the sins of the world. He was separated from his Father for the first time ever. And he suffered for three hours in total darkness while God unleashed his wrath upon him. Right before Jesus died on that cross, he told one of the criminals who believed in him that he would see him later in paradise. Jesus also cried out to his father in Luke chapter 23, verse 34. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, and they cast lots to divide his garments. Then after Jesus drank the wine vinegar from a sponge on the stem of a hyssop plant, he said, it is finished. Jesus bowed his head and died. Then a soldier pierced the side of Jesus' body to make sure that he was dead. Joseph of Arimathea asked permission to take Jesus' body. It was granted. He had a tomb that had never been used. Then he and Nicodemus wrapped Jesus' body along with 75-pound mixture of myrrh and aloes and pieces of linen cloth, and then placed Jesus in the tomb. Roman soldiers were placed outside the tomb a rock was put at the entrance to the tomb, and the soldiers were to prevent the disciples from taking Jesus' body. Hallelujah. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. It's Easter Sunday. Listen as I read John chapter 20, verses 10 through 18. Mary stood outside the tomb crying. While she was still crying, she bent down and looked inside the tomb. She saw two angels dressed in white. They were sitting where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and one at the feet. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? She answered, they have taken away my Lord. I don't know where they have put him. When Mary said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus asked her, woman, why are you crying? Whom are you looking for? Mary thought he was the gardener. So she said to him, did you take him away, sir? Tell me where you put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. Mary turned toward Jesus and said in the Jewish language, Rabboni, this means teacher. Jesus said to her, don't hold me. I have not yet gone up to the father, but go to my brothers and tell them this. I am going back to my father and your father. I'm going back to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and said to the followers, I saw the Lord. And she told them what Jesus had said to her. When Jesus rose from the grave with a resurrected body, he paid your sin price and my sin price. He stayed on the earth 40 days after he was resurrected. And he was witnessed by over 500 people. 
if we believe in our hearts that he is the risen Lord, the Son of God, repent of your sins, ask his divine forgiveness, and walk with him. By doing these things, we are assured a place in heaven with him. Praise God. Till next time, peace be with you.